Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining and happy Thursday. Really, it's an early happy Friday because we're going to have a nice long weekend. Yay, Melanie. Oh, I'm just looking forward to having some time off. Desperate need of that. So wonderful. And today's talk, though, is pretty amazing because as we know, this pandemic has shifted our lives in so many ways, not only on the professional side, but on the personal side, on the spiritual side, on the mental health side, but definitely how we want to look. And we have a wonderful guest who is going to be speaking and sharing with us, Jana Cope. Jana is someone I have known and she's been my personal stylist how long now 10 years maybe almost yeah goodness yeah yeah it's been a major major benefit of helping me to get my uh style in order in a lot of ways because when we first started working together she said renee why are you wearing that what kind of <laughs> color is that i only had like maybe two colors <laughs> in my closet they're all pretty much the same but really offered a lot of wonderful, wonderful insight about that. But now since we are in the pandemic, as most of us know, we are going to more than likely still be working virtually. Um, and on the plus side, because of this pandemic, we probably have expanded your life where you will be doing a lot more virtual sessions, just not on the business side, but on the personal side. And so really being able to understand how you need to look and as I shared with her, I said, you know, everybody looks great from about here to here. <laughs> we don't know what it looks like below there, but I just showed her I have, you know, bedroom slippers on. Now. <laughs> so she's going to share some wonderful tips on how to look, what to do, and how important it is to still look great so you can feel confident about who you are and still be a cutie pie. So with that said, turn it over to you, Jana. Thank you, Renee. Let me get my screen sharing going on in just one second. I'm not that technology technologically savvy as people assume that I am. So bear with me as I go back to the first page. Here we go and start sharing my screen. And by the way, this is session is, is being recorded, so it will be made available on our site as well as to anybody else that you might want to share it with. All right. Shining in a pandemic, reclaiming your personal style. I love this mask. I, I, I utilize this mask because, and I'm going to get into this in, further into my presentation, but I just wanted to highlight how masks have become fashionable. They are most definitely a part of a fashion statement. Um, I saw this, this cartoon in the New Yorker a couple of weeks ago, and I thought that it was so appropriate <laughs> for exactly how I'm feeling, and I'm sure how other people are feeling. Like, it's been a while. I thought I'd stop by and see how you were doing. <laughs> I've totally done that to my closet, like reminisce about the places we used to go together, the shoes and the, the roads that I traveled in. <laughs> um, and just, you know, I just acknowledging that our clothes do tell our story, you know, the dress that we wore when we got hired at our first job, um, a pair of shoes that you may have met your loved one in, um, you know, things that clothing holds a sentimental value and the clothing that we're not wearing is reminiscent in acknowledgement of the lives that we're no longer living because of the pandemic. So although it's hilarious, it does provide some kind of some thought into, yeah, let, let me see about how I'm approaching my wardrobe and what it really means. Um, so who am I? And this is my pandemic edition. This is who I've become <laughs> in this pandemic. I was vegan for about 16 years, but in my 15, 15th year, I decided to backslide. Um, I'm <laughs> backsliding back vegan. I've been eating fish and eggs and things that I did not eat previously. Uh, I've discovered Amazon as a personal shopper. I love going into stores and touching and feeling and, and just having a, a full on sensory experience. And since that was shut down and I still needed some items, I discovered Amazon. Um, I am a gamer. My favorite video game to play is The Sims. In the beginning of the pandemic, I would play it for like eight hours straight and that still was not enough time. Like I would be at the screen, like holding my eyes open. So I'm a gamer. That's kind of a, a little secret. Um, 
Postmates. I stopped cooking as much as I used to, which led me to becoming a backsliding vegan. Um, so I discovered Postmates. Um, NPR is playing all day while I'm playing The Sims or coloring in my coloring books, and I'm an active member of Black Lives Matter Los Angeles. So those are just who I who I who I've becoming and who I have always innately been, but it's been more so pronounced because of the pandemic. Some fun facts, my signature color is midnight blue, my signature wardrobe item is textured hosiery, and my style personality, which we'll kind of touch a little bit on here, is sexy is my primary and classic feminine are my secondaries. So what is personal style? Um, I see personal style as I've, I've been a personal stylist for 16, 17 years. I've been in the fashion industry for over 20 years. And personal style is how we define the dominant emotion attached to how we want to feel and be perceived every time we get dressed. It determines our purchases, the brands that we wear, and the general curation of our wardrobe. Your personal style is the visual representation of your lifestyle interest, aspiration, and values. It is your visual identity. So this is pretty much a lot of people's pandemic style that's been going on because most of our, our, our world has lived virtual and we want to show up professional, you know, from the neck up, um, wearing a, a blazer over, you know, a romper that you probably got at Target with some house shoes that you probably bought at the same time and some cozy lounge pants and the t-shirt, but that blazer really does pull it together. There are some earrings, some fun glasses that are loose that, you know, that have a film in it to protect against the blue screen and some lipstick and you are set for your virtual meetings. In quite contrast to how a lot of people did dress when they were interfacing with the world in more structured clothing, we wore bras and shapewear and high heels and we carried a purse. So how do we merge the pandemic style of the comfort at the bottom and just after that meeting, let me just throw off that blazer and just get back to, for me, playing The Sims and just get back to whatever you were doing with how we, we like to appear, but we find the comfort a lot more desirable, if you will, right? How do we merge those two? Well, society is shifting. Um, and we're going to get into what that exactly means a little bit. But first, masks. Masks have been introduced into society as a great nonverbal communicator, right? We can identify, first of all, it was just, you know, a basic blue mask or everyone's in a rush to get the N95 mask at one point. And then masks suddenly became fashionable. Fashion designers uh, started to show for their spring collections, outfits that, that, that were mixed in with the mask. People started to make their own clothing to resemble the mask to make it more fashionable. People can wear their values with the mask. And then at the latest, I want to say MTV Music Awards, you know, we were, we we're still in the middle of the pandemic and it was before the vaccine was, was readily available. Um, celebrities had to wear masks to perform and to appear on the red carpet and Lady Gaga being the, you know, the person who she is decided to make a huge statement to mix it in with her performance style with her performing aesthetic. So masks, even though we're still in the pandemic, and the CDC declared that if you're vaccinated, if you're fully vaccinated and you're around people who are fully vaccinated, you don't necessarily have to wear a mask. And even if you're going to the store, as long as the store doesn't have a mask mandate, you don't have to wear a mask. There's still a reluctancy, like my mask was, became, became a part of me, right? It became my statement. It became my nonverbal communication in, in the world where my mouth was completely closed off. Uh, so that's going to be another shift that's happening. And how do we communicate that identity that we developed in wearing our mask in this new post-pandemic world? Which leads me to trends. Um, trends are, it pretty much is a new directional shift caused by societal uh, change. A trend is not a fad. A trend can last however long it's needed to last. But depending on what society is demanding of it. 
prime example is athleisure, right? Athle athleisure is like leggings and jeggings and, and comfort wear and tennis shoes. Everyone thought that trend was going to die out in 2019, but because the pandemic demanded it, right? It demanded that we wear our comfortable clothing because wearing the structured clothing was no longer apropos, right? It wasn't appropriate to wear that while we're lounging at home for me playing The Sims, you know, or watching TV, watching Netflix, watching, you know, Tiger King, that crazy documentary that was popular in the beginning of the pandemic. So our clothing, a trend, a trend, it's more than clothing. Clothing, a trend, it, it indicates what we're going to wear because society is demanding it, right? So society demanded for several years that we become comfortable. Workplaces uh, relax a lot of their dress codes. You can wear tennis shoes to work in environments where they opposed you not to. Um, you can wear, you know, more knitwear clothing versus more structured tailored clothing, because that was a directional shift of society. And so there's two directional shifts that I have identified within the last year that I see taking place and that are going to influence how we live. The first one is ethereal womanist. Um, it's starting with literary great Zora Neale Hurston. It is a lifestyle that demands freedom from societal constraints with centering of Black women in their community with the unintentional benefit of a transformed society. So Stacey Abrams, who was a gubernatorial candidate for the state of Georgia was instrumental. Um, she unfortunately she did not win that election, but she was like, you know what? Bet I'm gonna I'm gonna mobilize so so many black people in the state of Georgia who have been previously disenfranchised from voting are able to vote, and it's because her of her efforts and two other black women that Georgia became a blue state. Um, Patrice Con Ka um, Colors, who is one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter, and uh, as of today was the previous director of the global. Um, Black Lives Matter Network. She started a global movement with a hashtag, you know, Black Lives Matter after the um, unfortunate decision of the Trayvon Martin case um, with George Zimmerman. And she, along with two other Black women, started a global movement that really exploded over this the summer with global uprisings. Um, the Black Ladder, the Black Lives Matter movement, is actually nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Um, Trisha Hersey, she is the creator of the Nat Ministry. The Nat Ministry literally centers rest as a form of reparation, centered on Black women. Um, and then Alice Walker, all of Alice Walker's writings are centered in a womanist aesthetic. Alice Walker is actually the first person to coin the term womanism. And her essays of, in the book, oh goodness gracious, it totally escaped me, in, in Search of My Mother's Gardens. And she defines exactly what a womanist is. And then other Black feminists have also identified what a womanist is and what those ethics mean and how it looks like in a lived society. Um, and Audre Lorde is also a writer and an activist. She helped identify what a womanist is in her writings. And then Octavia Butler, she is she was a fiction writer based out of Pasadena, where I live currently. Um, she wrote from a Black futures perspective. She wrote a series called Earthseed, and it centered a Black woman in rediscovering a world after the after literally an apocalypse. And it was interesting her writings. Her book was like written in the 90s, right? And she, one of the main characters was this political figure that wanted to make America great again. So this is in the 90s. So it's chilling to read that and to compare and contrast to what is, what you know, currently happened within the last six years within our country. So in essence, a womanist, they re-envision society and it's in the centering of black women. Another example of this, I, I wanna spend a little bit more time here to really kind of understand why this, this, um, why this is a trend that's really gonna propel the world. Um, how, how many of you guys have heard of intersectionality, that term to be used? No, okay, so intersectionality, it's combining a lot of marginalized identities into one, right? So it's understanding that, oh, that more than one marginalized group faces many um, opposing. So Kimberly Crenshaw, she's the one who coined that. What about the Me Too movement? Okay, another black woman coined that term and, and started that movement. Um, what about uh, respectability politics? 
that was another black woman. <laughs> and that was actually a black woman who's a womanist, who's a theological womanist, because womanism is also a form of theology. So all of these black women coined these terms that started movements that have completely transformed society. And this is what ethereal womanist is. So the vibe is being one with nature. It's relaxing. It's it's co-opt, it's taking out of society, like this society, this society was never created with the intention of a black woman to thrive in it, right? So a lot of that is a revolt against, you know what, this society does not want us. Let's create our, our own world, if you will. So it's being one with nature, it's understanding plant life, it's understanding what we put in our body, it's understanding our spirituality, and it's putting our self-care, which is goes way beyond getting manicures and pedicures and facials, our self-care, which is our mind, body, and spirit at the forefront. Oh, want to go back. So these images, the first image at the top left is uh, Trisha Hersey. She is the um, the founder of the Nat Ministry. She calls herself the Nat, the Nat Bishop, which is like legitimate. And she does, before the pandemic, she did a lot of installations where she would just have Black women dressed in nightgowns, laying in grass. It was literally an artistic movement and an expression just to show Black women resting because that's not a visual that we see in society. And then my favorite movie of all time, which if you've read the book, the book is obviously so much better, but the movie does a great example of it. This has been my move, my favorite movie since I was like five years old, didn't even understand the context of it. And then like rediscovered it as an adult. I was like, okay, this is why it was my favorite movie at five. It's The Color Purple. The Color Purple is literally a love letter to womanism, how Shook Avery transformed every one of those women's lives, how, you know, uh, it's yeah so if you have not seen the movie I hopefully everyone's seen the movie but if you've not read the book please read the book um and then Zora Neale Hurston back to this is the quote in the back she sat in the porch and, wa and watched the moon rise just envisioning a new future so the purpose is to envision new futures it's identifying with black women or, or we're divine you know we have a sense of divinity in order to survive into this world that was not created for us we face double marginalization through sexism and racism um, and how we're able to continue to thrive is nothing but to me as a Christian the grace of God so it's envisioning new futures, it's envisioning rest, it's envisioning um, being one with nature, it's envisioning uh, 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 community, um, it's envisioning um, abolition, the, the abolishment of, of systems that seek to do us harm. That is the new futures that seeks with uh, ethereal womanism. And then the fashion, the aesthetic of this, it's soft simplicity. It's light fabrications, it's ditzy florals, it's natural fibers, it's loose and flowy. And we have seen examples of this. Have you heard of the nap dress that was really popular during the pandemic? It was literally a dress that you take a nap in. <laughs> like, and like, it's a beautiful dress. <laughs> and Hill House Home like invented the nap dress. Like they coined that term. And it's just a dress to like lounge and just, you know, luxuriate in your home and you may go out and you put on some slides, but then you come back and you can take a nap. So it's the nap dress. And then in for the fall winter um, season, Jonathan Cohen, a fashion designer, he, his, his aesthetic is very luminous in, in its appeal. Um, Brandon Maxwell for his Resort 2020 collection, same thing. And all of these pictures are in nature. Like it's, it's so like kismet. And these are not fashion designers who probably even understand what womanism is. Like they're not designing under this ethos of an ethereal womanist. This is a term that I coined that I personally see that's being inflected in society based upon what's happening. Um, but there, this aesthetic is supporting the temperament in which society is moving into. And these are the colors. Purple is it, Alice Walker in her book, um, In Search of My Mother's Gardens, she says, uh, um, Purple is, womanism is to, uh, what is it? I'm, I don't want to mis misquote, and this is essential for understanding womanism. Um, feminism is to uh, lavender as womanism is to purple or something. Don't quote me exactly on that. But what she's saying is that woman is like, feminism actually does not happen without womanism. So womanism becomes before feminism as purple becomes before lavender. And so purple is an essential color for under, for of, of the aesthetic of, of a womanism, of a womanist. Then green represents nature and then yellow represents joy and sunshine. 
So here's some key words for to look for in society. It's rest, abolition, black fairies. Black fairies is like something that's completely like like it's kind of kooky, but it, it makes sense. It's like, you know, it's like ethereal creature. It's a fairy, you know, brings peace. They're kind, they're gentle. There's like this gentle nature about them. Sustainability. Um, Earth seed is a religion that was started within the book, um, uh, the parable of the sower by Octavia Butler, but there's several principles that can be adapted for that are a part of a woman's um, um, ethic and then resistance. So here are some people to please follow them on social media so that you can get exactly what I'm talking about. The first one is the nap ministry. Like she will minister to your soul. I'm serious. <laughs> um, the Crenshaw Dairy Mart, which is Patrice Cullors, uh, Khan's, um, art inst inst installation and she, Patrice Colors is actually an artist and you can see a lot of that demonstrated within the Crenshaw Dairy Mart and it's envisioning a, a new world. Um, Ebony Janice, like she is, you wanna, you wanna get some knowledge, some, some education, Ebony Janice is your girl. And then Christina Cleveland, who's also the, both and Ebony Janice and Christina Cleveland are theologians. They both have MDivs from very well-respected um, seminaries. Um, Christina Cleveland has taken womanism to a next level. She's an echo womanist and she envisions God as a black woman without neglecting any type of heresy. So I highly invite you to please research her and look her up. Okay, on film, The Color Purple, in our mother's gardens. Have you guys heard of that Netflix documentary? Okay, please, please, please watch it. It's about black women's relationships with their mothers and the, pretty much the maternal lineage. It is beautiful. And then Daughters of the Dust. It's a pretty, it's an older movie that came out in the eighties. And then music, Solange, Jasmine Sullivan, Lauren Hill, Erica Badu. And not all of these, like not all those artists identify as womanist, but again, womanism is, it's, it, it puts in the center, the lived experiences of black women. And all three of those artists sing about the lived experiences of black women. And literature, Kelly Brown Douglas, who is a womanist theologian, um, Leigh Liley, Mayor Papian, she is the um, director of um, women's studies at Wesleyan College. And then I always mispronounce her name, but Chinkanwe Okano Albijiam, she is a womanist um, scholar. So please look up all these people. Um, all the literature, obviously, they have many things that they have written. Christina Cleveland, she's a scholar and she has written several books. So this obviously is, is something that I see going to this direction. Can, can you guys identify with some things that you've seen that could kind of connect with this? <laughs> no one, okay. <laughs> Well, trends are called, you know, before everyone adapts to a trend, trends have a life cycle. So before there's early adapters in the trend. So you guys are probably going to be the early adapters to this and adapting this aesthetic. The next one is reckless abandon. It is opulence, individualism, and saccharine happiness marked by consumption as a result of being trapped inside. The vaccinated and never not vaccinated are now able to resume their lived pre-pandemic lives with the determination to make up for time loss. And the making up will be ginormous. This is a revival of the Roaring Twenties with 80s extravagance in a technology-driven world. So the image that I use is from Scarface, the 1983 movie. Who's seen that? Who's, who's seen that movie? Like they're outrageous in that movie. It's like, this is just over the top. It's like, are these people for real? Like, really? Um, and we'll get into like how that's manifested right now to society. Like, really, what are these people thinking? So um, during, and it, the vibe is instantaneous. Like it's instantaneous conversations, it's instantaneous like dance moves and songs and catchphrases that we see happening on TikTok. And then it's instantaneous wealth, which a lot of people have aspirations of with Bitcoin. And all three of these, and oh, Clubhouse. Are you guys familiar with Clubhouse? Is it social media? Okay, yes, yeah, a social media app where you can have conversations in rooms with like multitude of people and it's not recorded. So the conversation is like, it's literally like being on a three-way phone, like back in the day when you used to call all your friends, you used to talk at one time. That's literally what Clubhouse is. But all three of these things gained great popularity because of the pandemic and they're not going away. And it allows for this instant instantaneous connection or this instantaneous wealth. 
And the colors associated with reckless abandon, it's loud, it's bold, it's neon. Neon colors were really invented by in injecting artificial color into printing. And we really saw it in neon signs within the 60s and it gained much more explosion in the 80s. My nails are neon. And that's, that's, that's not even intentional. It's because that's the vibe that I'm feeling. I'm feeling a little bit reckless. I wanna go loud, I wanna be bold, right? Um, the purpose is exclusivity. So how many of you guys were in like social pods, like with people who you trusted before the vaccination came about, like yours, like people who you saw, like you felt comfortable inviting them into your home. That pod could have been like your mom, right? It could have been like your father, it could have been your nuclear family that you were living with within your home. Like your pod did not necessarily have to be by choice, but for, for select groups of people, it was by choice. And people are going to continue that, that nuclear um, close-knit circle that they've developed, right? It could have been because they're in close proximity that they otherwise would have never been friends. You know, they just saw each other passing, maybe it was a neighbor, but because you guys are both in, hey, sitting in your house, you might as well connect. And I believe that those relationships are still going to be cemented and they're going to keep in that same type of tight structure. We see this with different types of dinner parties that are happening, dinner experiences. Dinner experiences, a lot of, um, you know, five-star restaurants are becoming a thing. You know, you make a reservation, you have this beautiful dining experience and it's exclusive. You have your own server, the chef may come out. And I believe that's going to continue. JetBlue, an airline that started off as a budget airline now has this luxurious set aside area of, of select um, um, carriers that they have select fleets of their of their airlines that's similar to like you know first class that you get like you know at, at American Airlines or like United um, so they're offering this type of experience and then travel I think a lot of people um, a lot of travel by by uh, by car is popular i was just listening to npr you know like i'm an npr head and traveling by car particularly to national parks is on the rise because it's outdoors it's a nice place if you have children to take them to it's getting back to nature which also clicks back to the womanist uh, the ethereal womanist is getting back to nature um and then the fashion it's loud it is bold, it's leather, it's ruching, it's puff sleeves, it's asymmetrical designs. Um, it's, it's just loud. It's a revival of the 1920s mixed in with the 80s, as you can see in these aesthetics. Both of the, uh, in the rights, that's Stella McCartney from her fall winter collection. And then the asymmetry is also from Stella McCarthy. And then um, Angel Chen, that, I mean, that, Fa fur boa with you know the the black is just you know it's loud it's it's obnoxious but it's right. <laughs> um, oh, you guys are chatting. I didn't even see this. <laughs> I'm really bad with the chatting. Let me go back. I'll check those out in a second. Um, okay, these are some key words for reckless abandon. Travel experiences, normalcy. Like these people, they like, forget this pandemic. I want to go back to normal and probably didn't even like the normalized, but they want to go back to that because it's more familiar. But they want to go with like with a bang. They want to like go go all for it, like full force. What was that word that was around a, a couple of years ago? Like, um, it like meant live for today. I can't think of what all the young folks were saying, goodness gracious. But anyway, um, neon, insatiable. YOLO. Yeah, exactly, Yo <laughs> YOLO. That's, this is, these are YOLO people. <laughs> insatiable now in its celebrity culture. Okay, so look for this on social media. Look to Instagram travel influencers and those Kardashians and Jenners. Like they are the... They're clearly, the clearly the reckless abandoned people. Remember when I went back and I said, gosh, I don't believe these people. That's the Kardashians and Jenners. Like they fully exemplify reckless abandon. Like they live their lives on their own terms. They're, they're, they're very individualistic. Um, and you know, that's just who they are. Okay. Film, Scarface, The Wolf of Wall Street, Sex in the City 2.0. Like they're they're like, that's a TV show, but they're like rebooting like that TV show. And I don't know if anyone asked for that, but apparently Reckless Abandon asked for it. I'm in the Miami Vice. Um, music, Cardi B, Juice World, Lady Gaga, and Sean Combs, also known as P. Diddy. 
in literature, we can see the works of uh, in Great Gatsby and Crazy Rich Asians, and then I Claudius. Have you guys seen, I, have you ever read I Claudius or heard of the series? It was like on PBS, like I wanna say like in the early nineties, um, but it's about based upon the Roman empire. And you know, the Romans were like, were, were known to be very outlandish and, and outrageous. Um, and just, this is just a little side thing that I didn't really talk about um, I think I mentioned this in the blog, but after every pandemic that the world has ever experienced, like with the Black Plague, with the Spanish flu, it has always resulted in some type of cultural revival or revolution. So after the Black Plague, that birthed the Renaissance. And then after the Spanish flu, that birthed the Roaring Twenties and then the Harlem Renaissance. So look for new, look for these trends out in society in social media, film, music, and literature. Those are indicative of a trend because all of those are going to correspond with how we show up. Because remember, our clothing is nothing but an expression of our lived lives. Okay, any questions before I get on to the next part? Let me let me read you guys your comments. Let's see. Okay. Right on. I'm really bad. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Out of pandemic comes bad. That's true. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, what else we got? You guys have any questions? No, no questions. Okay. <laughs> Well, if you want to work personally with me, and I'm still doing virtual, um, I am fully vaccinated, and everyone within my nuclear environment is fully vaccinated. Um, just putting that out there if you want to work with me in person. But if not, if you're not ready to edit out your closet or go shopping, I offer this wonderful virtual style coaching. This is focused on developing your style identity because maybe you lost it in the pandemic. I mean, me personally, I only wore heels. I did not own one pair of jeans and I never wore shorts before this pandemic. And I'm wearing all three, like all the time. But how do I make that authentic to my style personality, right? Because as a sexy style personality, I'm not gonna wear it as a comfort, but they're shorts. Aren't shorts supposed to be comfortable? Like, how does that mean? So this virtual style coaching series answers all that. It makes it shorts authentic to who you are, to your lifestyle to your body shape, to, to, uh, to, to wherever you're going in life, you know, where, where, wherever you're going to wear these shorts, you know, maybe you don't go to the beach, maybe you're just chilling at home versus going to work. Maybe you want to wear shorts to work. And how does, how do you wear shorts to work? All of these like hypothetical <laughs> questions are answered in the virtual style coaching series. It's a four week program. We work one-on-one -on -one, just like this over zoom, you have homework to do. And during this entire four weeks, you cannot shop. Like you may be inspired to shop, but you cannot shop. This is a, this is an act of discipline. So this is open for people who don't want to shop. You kind of want to shop, but you lost your style and you want to reclaim it and get it back. This is a great program. Now, if you are ready to meet in person, you are fully vaccinated. Everyone in your household is fully vaccinated. I will come to you and we're going to look at your closet at all the things you have not worn this year. And maybe the things you didn't wear in 2019 and maybe things that you don't have any desire to wear because this pandemic has really shifted your lifestyle and we'll go over all those items in your closet and we'll curate looks that work for you where you're at right now or if we've already done that and you're like i actually want to get some new items like i think i want a pair of shorts and some flats because i'm never going to wear those heels that i got rid of we're going to go shopping together at South Coast Plaza um, in a secured private styling suite that's closed off to the rest of the shopping center because I'm still very pandemic sensitive and aware. Um, and we're going to be safe inside of an enclosed space. I'll pull some clothing for you, try it on, and then we go out to lunch. So those are the services that I'm offering. Um, In-person is very limited because I'm still you know, living as we are still in a pandemic and I do not want to expose people to people, if, if that makes any sense. So in-person services are at max two times a month, but virtual services, I have open lots of availability for that. All right, so these are some next steps. Please visit my war my um, website, wardrobeparcel.com, and that is where you can take the style quiz. Remember I mentioned something about these style personalities and I just kind of glossed over it? Well, you can learn what your style personality is by taking the quiz. 
And then there'll be some prompts. I'll get it. We can have a conversation about what that means, if that resonates with you. Um, or if you want to go straight to like, I know what my style personality is. I have already worked with Jana. I've already know about the style personality thing. Well, we can connect either for virtual servicing or I can come to your house or we can meet at South Coast Plaza, whatever you may have it. And then you can subscribe to my newsletter um, where I talk about all kinds of kooky things like about what's happening in fashion, you know, from a political perspective, how politics influence fashion, how religion influences fashion, how aesthetics and literally influences every fraction of society. I talk a lot about that on my blog with some fashion fun stuff thrown in as well. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this and these trends resonated with you. And please, please let me know if you have any questions. I like questions. I'm going to check the chat too. Let's see. Okay. Keep going. Oh, what are your thoughts about stitch fix style in a box versus consulting in a person? Okay. That's a very good question. Um, I'll read it thoroughly. What are your thoughts about stitch fix style in a box versus consulting a personal stylist like yourself? I mean, they really don't know you. You don't get to talk to them. They don't get to see you. They don't get to see how you move. They don't have any prior history about how you previously shopped. Um, sometimes a lot of women do not wear the right clothing size. And so if you're just going at this from a clothing perspective and not a coaching and transformational perspective, then you may continue to get the same things over and over. You never really transform or improve your personal style. So it's great if you already know what your personal style is, if you are 100% sure what your clothing size is, and you really do not want the one-on-one -on -one attention that I'm going to give you and hold you accountable <laughs> to some of the agreements that we make about your personal style, then that's great. Um, I love that it's revolutionized fashion and made it more accessible to people who are more reluctant to go in, in person to shop, particularly during the pandemic. But I, I love to work with people. There's lots of nonverbal um, communication that happens when I'm going over someone's wardrobe in their closet. I get to see patterns of behavior in their shopping. Like sometimes people may not even know that they don't like turtlenecks, but if I don't see a turtleneck in their closet, I already know that they don't like them, right? I don't have to ask them that. Um, Sometimes you like something and you don't even know that you like it, or you don't like something and you don't even know that you like it. And I see all these patterns of behavior and how people are showing up in the world, particularly when I go into to homes, because I can see how you decorate your home. How you decorate your home is, is really a very key into your style personality, because our homes are a sanctuary. So there's lots of things that I look for when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with, with my clients um, that you just really cannot get just from filling out an online survey and the person never gets to see you. Okay, what are the three items that you cannot live without now that you are over a year in the pandemic? Okay, for me personally, lipstick. Like, I mean, so I do wear my mask, right? I mean, I even put on lipstick for this because I'm like, I get to wear lipstick and put my lipstick on. Um, I love when, you know, most of my socialization, social, socialization, it happens within like, you know, my pod, if you will. And we don't wear masks because all of us are vaccinated. So I put on my lipstick and I'm like, God, I got to put on the mask to go in this place and the lipstick gets caught on the, on the mask. Is that happening to me? <laughs> so lipstick, um, what else? Sundresses. You know, we're back into the season. Sundresses are one of the most comfortable, particularly if it's like in a flowy fabric and it's breezy. And it kind of gives you that same feeling of like leggings and sweatpants. It's just a one piece item. That's kind of what I'm wearing today. You know, I kind of dressed it up for you guys. <laughs> I'm wearing a cute little dress that I can just throw over and, you know, go pick up cat food if needed, run out the house and then run back and continue to play The Sims or whatever I'm going to do after we finish the webinar. But um, and then maybe some comfortable shoes. A lot of my, a lot of my life has really transformed in the sense of, and I'm sure yours has too. A lot of my life was spent out. I didn't have a lot of inside clothes. I had a lot of outside clothes because it was ministry at church. It was working one-on-one -on -one with clients. It was speaking engagements. It was networking. It was lots of things that required me to be fully dressed. Right. And that doesn't exist anymore. Um, so for me, I'm personally incorporating, how can I wear my new flat shoes with a cute pair of like pants or a cute skirt that I never would have worn in the pandemic. So it's merging those two looks into one. 
Okay, how old is too old when you need to toss the old clothes? Um, if you don't like it, like if, have you been in your closet and you're like looking for something, you put like, oh, I don't want to wear this. You go over it. Okay, that means you don't like it. And it does not need to be in your closet. Like, why are you, that's, that's key. Um, if it's something just doesn't make you feel your best, like when you put it on and you don't have good memories about it, like your body kind of remembers, like it makes you itchy, you know, it's ill-fitting, like you feel like you have to keep adjusting it, then that tells that's not good. Um, if it feels dated to you, because again, style is personal. What's dated to you may not be dated to somebody else and vice versa. If you if it's something that you absolutely love and love wearing it and you've had it for like 15 years and it still makes you feel amazing and it's in good condition and you've kept it up, like you've gotten in the necessary alterations needed, keep it. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to get rid of something just because it's old in that vein. I think if it's showing signs, if things are showing like signs of wear, then you should replace it. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that's, that, that if, it's more about how does it make you feel? Okay, what are tops or best for Zoom virtual meetings? Patterns and prints or anything with the interesting design like what Renee's wearing is really beautiful. Or what Carol, I like your, your vibrancy of the color of your shirt. So something that draws attention to the face. For me, it's glasses. I, I, I'm just turned 40 this year. And I don't know, like, like life changes after 40. Like, like a lot of things have changed. One thing, my eyesight, I can't see. So, so eyewear has been kind of a signature thing for me. I talk with my hands. So I wear lots of, um, like, you know, colorful nail colors, um, my curls and earrings, you know, I wear, you can't really see, but I wear earrings. So prints, pat, um, prints, color, lipstick, um, eyewear, and, you know, hair, because those, anything from up here is, is what's going to be visual. Oh, I thank you for saying I look so young. That's hot. <laughs> um, okay. Any other questions? Oh, Jewelry, yes, just yes, jewelry is very important. I have on this fun necklace. It kind of draws some attention to my face. It's bring, it's framing my face. Or if I wanted to, like I can double wrap it, and it can really frame like my neck and my face very well. So your 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 attention is now right here. Yeah, like I see your earrings, Yolanda. Those are really cool because it's draw. Yes, it's drawing attention to your face and your hair is up. Yeah. Okay, prints, colors, pearls, patterns, got it. Okay, all right, anything else? This was a lot of fun. Do you guys see yourselves in any of these trends? Do you see yourself like incorporating this or do you see it in, like moving into, in society and anything? Well, well, we'll see. I know, the, you know, it was so important to hear you talk about how things have shifted, just not from a style perspective, but from a lifestyle perspective is wonderful because we are all going to be shifting. You know, we are going to go back to a normal, but it's going to be a new normal mm -hmm. about how we're going to be living our lives. And although you know, maybe many people will be able to get back into the professional life and do some things um, with different groups, we're still going to be doing a lot of virtual activities, I think. And so it's important to understand what you need to do and what you need to look like in yeah. order to move that forward. So yeah, thank you so much for that. And, and again, I have been working with Jana for a while. I remember, like I said, when we first started, when she first came to my house and she looked at my closet, <laughs> I only had like two colors. Yeah, yeah. two colors. <laughs> Colors. It was gray. It was black. Yeah. And then I think I had maybe brown. Something. Yes, there were brown. all more colors. And she was like, "Yeah, try this on, Renee." And and she would buy the clothes for me. And you know, we would try them on. So it, it's a wonderful, wonderful relationship. And I highly encourage you know working with her on that front. So I know that. Uh, with that said. Love you. Thank you so much for sharing all these great ideas. And as I said, this is uh, this recording will be going out so everybody will be able to re-listen and take notes and be able to look at all of this content that she has shared with us and take us into the next direction. So thank everyone. Next month, we will have our 
also our smart women because all women are smart our smart women savvy uh webinar and it will be our vision board we had that in january and a number of people asked can we do that again in june just to see how you know how far we are along in meeting our objectives and so we will be having it again um, in June, whether people participated in it or not, doesn't matter. But we have a wonderful speaker and she does on an international basis. She's a Latino and she's going to be talking about how you can put your goals and your objectives and be able to look at it every day. It does make a difference because it does happen and it does come true if you are writing that out. So Mine have already started meeting the objective. So I'm happy to share that. So with that said, thank everyone for your time. And we will make sure that we will have you back on board with us, Jana, and help us to stay on top of being stylists. Yes. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you, Jana. Thank you. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.